I've seen this shit before in my life. <sighs> that is so obnoxious. Welcome to uh, welcome to NPR. Welcome to Seiki House Episode Two. Today I'm Griffin. Today and this is Joe. Today we're going to be discussing taxes. How do they work? The movie that we watched is Chorus. Chorus, uh, one and two, uh, which is technically a six-episode OVA. That is was it? released as two movies in North America. Is it six episodes? It is. It's six. Oh, it doesn't feel like that. Mm, no. Right. Karis, uh was the 40th anniversary um, celebratory animation released by Tatsunoko Studios in 2006? Yeah, 2006. 2006 through seven, I think. Really? Yeah, it took a while for, for them to all come out in Japan as it was coming out, but yeah. Uh, how would you describe the plot of Cars? I don't uh, know. It's, uh, it's very unique. Yeah, I'm not sure how to put it into words. It's about... Uh, it takes place in the fictional uh, province of Shinjuku, Tokyo. And it's about humans and yokai living together on different Sh planes. Shinjuku is real. I know, but it's like a fictionalized version of it. Yeah, you said the fictional province. Oh, whoops. I meant sensationalized. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I know it's real, but it's not as, wait, as zany. <laughs> zany. <laughs> um, it features a transformation hero, which I think specifically has a name for it, like Haishin or something. Some, wait, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know this. I, I looked up the Oh, the wiki okay. Here. That's news to me. So Neat. So... Akin to Ultraman, or yeah. Kind of well, it's sort of a in the, in the vein of that kind of transformation. Yeah, uh, it's it's sort of like a, a a darker spin on what Tatsunoko that's a, came to be known that's for. Exactly what the director said. Yeah. Well, that, I that's mean, what they wanted to do. Yeah, it's like it's like Gatchaman or or something like that, where it's sort of like the the human sized hero who transforms into the suited figure of the night and fights demons and monsters. But there's a whole there's a whole other plot around it. Yeah, <laughs> it's convoluted and not really explained. It's just non-linear, but like to a degree where you kind of don't notice it sometimes <laughs> and you get confused. Yeah, especially with the first part. Yeah, the prophecy. Yeah. So I I will probably just do you want to discuss it as a two-parter or as like a whole thing. Because that's, that's what I wasn't sure about. It feels extremely segmented, so I think it's better to do it as parts. Okay, so part one, The Prophecy. Yeah. Which is about, like, they're both, like, when you watch them in two parts, they're both, like, 80, 85 minutes long. So they're, like, they're movie length, but, I mean, it technically it is a whole thing. <sighs> Excuse me. Beautiful. Okay. I'm leaving that in. Yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I, I don't blame you. Um, so with... Chorus, the first part, it kind of just starts. It does. It's got a super cold opening fight scene, which is really neat, too. It's like one of the better scenes in the whole first part of it is that opening fight scene. There's yeah. like, it's, it like, it starts out in like the sky, and you have like no idea where it takes place. And then like the, the two chorus fighting like get down to the city, and it's like you realize that it's like this modern day thing, mm -hmm. but it like totally didn't seem that. It just that looks way like two. Ironclad samurais fighting in the sky. Yeah, it's neat. Which happens every day in Japan. Um, beautiful animation too. It's like an amazing opening. It like showcases like every single piece of every single you know kind of animation that they use throughout the whole thing. Which is, it's a blend of like, of uh, how would you describe it? It's like shell It's cell shaded well, CG. Yeah, it's like 3D models. Um for some of the characters against like hand-drawn environments and like 2d uh human characters mm -hmm. which and like you know you might hear that and you think of a lot of anime that that has done that same thing since then and a lot of them look like shit and so you hear that and it might turn you off of it what about ruby no oh <laughs> god well no i mean that's what i mean you think of stuff like I'll, I'll to know i'll i'll to know, i don't huh? know how to say it yeah it's stuff that just looks like trash but Karis is like one of the I mean it's like that's you know in 2006 that 2D and 3D blend was wasn't super common. No, it wasn't and it's kind of depressing to see 
such an early form of that. Yeah, but be like able they, to pull off lighting, yeah, which is usually the they the, know how the to use it. Issue. The, the problem is, is that it's like they don't. Well, what Cars does correctly is that it doesn't like texture the three D models differently. Like they don't have like a sheen on them that no. doesn't exist on the other characters or anything. They they they're flatly colored like everything else is. So it's like it like works like it fits and if they're again they're able to to do lighting with it as yeah, well it, to actually yeah. make it fit which i don't think is done at all with a lot of cg and, and 2d yeah. implementation and i think the choice to make the chorus and the mikra the demons cg i think really adds to that adds to the Separation. idea that they yeah that they exist on two different planes because like animation wise they exist on two different planes yeah so that's kind of neat and i think another thing that they're they they show really well that usually the 2d and the 3d animation is is separated like you said but when they do connect it like showing like, the face with inside of the, yeah the, the the cg model mm. it looks great it looks really good I, it doesn't yeah it doesn't look like a, a 2d head pasted onto a 3d model it doesn't look like that at all and there's even moments that I can think of where it, like, where entire characters, like, morph from 3D models to, like, a 2D shape. Like, in the same frame. Yeah. Or in the same shot, and it, like, it looks seamless. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not awkward, or it's, like... Because, okay, well, I think a lot of the idea that there's there's so many filters and lighting effects on the screen in Karis that I think hides a lot of what might be shoddier animation it's not like a blank yeah page that yeah they didn't add but it's not to. like cheap it's not like a cheap like they're not lying to you it's like oh they use all of these effects to like the film's benefit and it looks really nice like sometimes like there's just a lot of lighting and a lot of smoke effects going on and yeah a there's a lot of smoke effects which a lot of really like, helps yeah a lot of like lens flares and stuff that like I don't know any other anime that looks like this. It's super unique. It's like they had a movie team. To, it's like to they edit had it. like a character designer who wasn't like a like a fucking hack. And that's another thing that I appreciate about Chorus is the character design. I don't know who did it. Yeah, it's I, don't, I don't know who did the character art for this movie, but it it's distinct. It's very unique. It's I haven't really seen nice. Something like it before. They they. All the characters are anatomically correct, and it's like they don't and beautiful lips. Yeah, and they don't they don't warp people for comedy in this either. Everybody like is stays a consistent shape, and everything. It like it all holds together. What it's do you really mean by nice. that? Warp. Well, you know, it's like that's a you know an anime trope where characters like they'll like warp or shift the shape or simplify a character for like a certain effect or an emotion. But everything in Karis is constantly on model, and everything is like correct all the time and that's not a bad thing but the tone of Karas is really dark and serious and so the fact that they don't do that and they do keep these characters yeah, it's on just, model constantly it, is... I, I didn't think about it because it just mm -hmm. doesn't it, doesn't it just feels do so it. natural yeah. you don't notice it because at its core it's it's an action movie first and an anime second I feel like the director also or the creator of Karas also referred to as the horror yeah yeah well. yeah oh well i mean that's why it's on this podcast who directed We're this just doing that well yeah but this mostly right? um sir tatsunoko i forget his the name man himself shit i can't believe i forgot the director's name i usually try to include that in these mm -hmm. out of respect it's not on the back of the case it's jay hernandez it's really n oh keichi sato <laughs> keichi sato that's it thanks thanks mr sato he might not be the one that I'm I'm directly referring to, but yeah, one of the creators of Cars referred to it as a horror, a, a horror movie. Did you read this on the Wikipedia page? Yeah, because I also read the Wikipedia page mm -hmm. uh, like a couple days ago, and I learned a lot about Cars that I didn't that I didn't know beforehand. The Wikipedia page for this movie series is is oddly informative. There's a lot of info that I didn't know about the production and the symbolism and the and the themes of the of the film, mm -hmm. which was surprising to me because I don't know anybody else who's seen this. I always thought this was like super obscure. 
Which I think it kind of is. I think it is. Did Demo ever talk about cars? No, never. Yeah, that's what I thought. I know. Like, we should send it to him. I, I watched this when it was streaming on Netflix in middle school on a whim. So oh, I didn't bored even. one night. Yeah, that, and, that's and I was like, to me. And I, I, like, again, just judging by the cold opening, which is like super badass, I, was, I remember sitting there watching it and being like, how have I never heard of this? Like, why, why was nobody talking about this? <laughs> I feel like a lot of people don't know the works of Tetsunoko in the states i think they definitely used to um way back in the days of speed racer yeah gachaman or battle of the planets as it was known over here whatever it was called yeah um back when they were still actively localizing a lot of these shows but i yeah i guess they've just sort of lost an audience over here and that's kind of sad because i've always liked them as an animation studio yeah, from, from the little work that I've seen of it, Karas and some of Kashrin's sins. Oh, Kashrin's sins. I've, I've, I've enjoyed those two immensely. Yeah. It's, well, it's, I've enjoyed part two of Karas immensely. Because it's all like, like again, same thing with Kashrin's sins. It's like, I don't know anything else like it. It's so, like, visually is so against the, the grain of what's popular right now. And even, even back, back then. In 2006, I don't know anything from that year that looked like Karis. I don't even know what was out in 2006. I don't remember. Uh, Ergo Proxy. Okay, that one... Mm -hmm. That one's kind of like a diamond in the rough. Yeah. Oh, these both are. Yeah. Karis is also a diamond in the rough. Karis is really fucking cool is the is the point we're trying to get across. Um, in yeah. terms of In terms of it's as a piece of as a piece of work like like in terms of animation and the artwork and like the feelings it's trying to convey it's it's solid like through and through it looks really nice it looks great it's beautiful the one thing that i think falters is the story and the writing yeah not maybe not so much the writing all the dialogue is totally serviceable except for the beginning of part two which we'll talk about <laughs> in a bit yeah but in the first part especially there's it tries to tell a story that's not really there um, cause, well, I think it's weird because it's like, cause we, we watch these as movies and not as, as an, and not as they were intended to be seen by Tatsunoko, which was yeah. episodically in six episodes. So I feel like watching them that way would kind of give you a different experience. I don't know that for sure. I, I, Instead, well, it's like you watch it as a two part movie. And you're taking everything in at once, and you don't have time to like think about what you've been shown. Like, like if, like if you took the first movie and split it up into three 26-minute episodes, or however long they are, it's like, I just feel like it would be a completely different viewing experience. And I'm kind of bummed that I don't get to see it that way. I think pacing-wise, but still the content of it is exactly the same. The character it is, it just is. readily accepts his situation immediately with yeah. no development at all mm -hmm. and you're just kind of supposed to believe it well i mean okay so the main character otaha we have some problems with he's a former former yakuza hitman which you don't know which you don't know until the second half of it but he's this guy who's been who was killed or his soul was separated from his body at least and he's appointed to become the new karas which is a demon hunting cyber warrior whose job it is to protect the will of the city and keep the two planes of existence in harmony together and and like you said he just sort of like wakes up and just sort of like readily accepts this position and with with no questions yeah a, a spirit called yeah urine a, a, a spirit called urine comes to him and says what like you'll become You'll def you'll be the defender of the city. You will become Karas. You will defeat the Miku Mikura. Yeah, and he's just like, yeah, okay. Well, I mean, after what you learn about him later, that he was like a he's like a, he's a product of incest, and he's like a hitman, and he's a gangster, and it's like he had this shitty shit life. And I think the idea is that now, like, he's given the chance to like redeem himself? save people rather than just be forced to kill them so i think that's why he was just so ready to accept it because it's just he's not living a piece of shit life anymore and i'd be fine with that if we were shown anything 
to give that. It just, yeah, I mean, you are in the second part. In the second part, though, yeah. I, I'm not a fan of that kind of storytelling. And especially when it's given you in... All of that information is given to you within ten minutes. Like, just ten minutes. Yeah. It, they they go through the dialogue so fast to, to give you all this exposition. There's, and then there's stuff that hints gone. at it, for sure. Like, before you even see him as Karas, you see him being wheeled into the hospital, like, bleeding to death. Yeah, which is a really good there's, scene. Yeah, there's stuff that hints at it, but it does jump around awkwardly a little bit. Yeah, it's it. If the dialogue and the exposition of the background of Otaha was sprinkled throughout the first part, and yeah. then it is heavily explained in in part two or episode four, whatever it would be, I'd be totally fine with that. But it's not really well because it it really seems like Otaha is a complete blank slate in the first part. Yeah, and and I feel like, I mean, outside of the characterization of Otaha, I feel like. The whole series is like that. The, everything, can, like all the characters and all the concepts and all the symbolism, is all—it's all barely there, and you just—you just, you just kind of have to infer a lot of things about it. And it, a lot more elements of Karis are successful at that, but a lot, some few of them fall flat. Yeah, like I, the characterization of Altaha is one that like doesn't quite work for me. But the things like the Mikra and and the yokai and the humans and how those two planes exist and Echo's whole plan and, yeah. and the whole will of the city that, oh, that they're talking about. That all works totally fine. Yeah, they're all things that you have to infer mm -hmm. based on what you're being shown. They don't tell you that. And those things work. It's, yeah, it's Some of the characterization is a little bare bones for me. Yeah, it's it's odd because everything else is sprinkled and, and described. Even, I mean, the... The... the Detrotagonist. Protagonist. Is that how you say that? The what? The second protagonist. I don't know. The second protagonist. Whatever. I guess. It has a second. It has a different. Are you talking about the detective? No, not the detective. The the Mikura. Oh, oh, uh, Nue. Nue. Nue has a much, much better characterization than the first part. Yeah. Like, a, he seems like the main character, and he seems like a tragic hero as well. Yeah, and you don't even know what Nui is after for a good chunk of the first movie until he explains it later. But, like, even then, his character is so much more intriguing, mm -hmm. and he's got a personality that I find way more... I, I uh, really like Nui. Yeah, he's great. He's cool. He's this cool dude. He's, he's got, like, a slick character design. He's, like... He's... He's like a monster, too. He's awesome. Yeah, you don't really even know what he is mm -hmm. at first. You kind of just think that, oh, is he a different kind of demon hunter? Is he a Karas? Well, and then, I mean, that's the other thing, is that I would hesitate to say that there is a primary protagonist of this. Because, I mean, you have Otaha, who the whole... Like... In the second part, it's definitely Otaha. In the first part, it's switching between Nui. Yeah, but there's so many concurrent storylines going on, like Nui's, and you have Otaha's, and you have human characters, and they all get, like, a fairly equal amount of screen time. Absolutely. Like, everything is, like, it's all paced really well. Like, I feel like I, I got to know all these characters, like, a fair amount by the end of it. Like, I don't feel like anybody got shafted or left out. No. I, I don't think so at all. So it's like it's like I would hesitate to say that there is a central protagonist, even though it's Karis is the is Bathroom, the deciding, which is why. But there there is more than one Karis, though. Yeah, there are. There's three, four if you count the one that gets killed. In yeah, the in the cold open. But yeah, it, also another part with the the first the first movie is that um you can tell that it's episodic. Yeah, it, it's it's very much like the hero of the 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 villain of the episode. Yeah, there's a there's they do take sort of a monster of the week kind yeah. of approach with it with the Mikura, which is fine. Oh, it's totally. But fine. again, I think it, in a it, movie, it, it, it hurts your viewing experience to watch it as a movie. Yeah, unfortunately, which is the only way to see it in North America is to watch it as a two part thing. Right, which is a bummer, but like. Having the context of it being a six episode thing, I think, helps a little bit. It helps you separate it. Mm -hmm. Um, what else is there to say about um, the first part? This is sort of an all encompassing thing, but can we talk about the score and how fucking good it is? Yeah, it's a really good score. Like normally, I'm not huge into movie scores that have like theme music to them. 
<laughs> I feel like you're. I like. There's a lot of scores I like that do that, but I my favorite movie scores are ones where the music Wonder Woman. is kind. Of, oh, fuck off. Well, ones where like the music is kind of in the background, you know, and it's sort of like a more of a tone thing than like a like an orchestrated piece. But like, I really like the chorus theme. It's really cool whenever it plays. I think it sounds really neat, and I love the arrangement of it and just the tone of it and the way it sounds. It's a really nice score. Along yeah. With this, it it like you said, it it really sets a tone for it. Mm -hmm. It it never it makes it feel like it's an action scene when it's an action scene, and it makes it feel like a, a horror. Yeah, like a truly oh, yeah. horrific scene when it's horrific. And that's another hard thing to do is that like action horror is not easy to pull off. Most action horror thing like films I've seen go way too far into action. I can't even think of something that does it well. Besides Chorus. Besides Chorus. Rig like off Rigor the top Mortis. Of my... Yeah, Rigor Mortis. I was genuinely spooked but and that's a good podcast for another time. Next episode? Probably. Yeah, let's do next episode. Okay. Yeah, we just decided that on this <laughs> Um Yeah, it's it, it does that really well, especially with part two. And I think I think what I was I was thinking about this before before we um we're gonna do this podcast. Uh the first part is far less graphic. Ooh, there's like weird moments not weird but there's like some intense moments of violence sprinkled throughout the whole thing in the first part every single human dies in a way that's pretty clean and i don't know there's the lady that like disintegrates in the car except and... <laughs> it's not bloody that's no the, it's not but it still thing. turns into like a fucking it's like, horrific shriveled skeleton sure, but... but not like yeah, and I mean, I, terrifying. Like, I mean, the second half you can expect that because it's the big climactic battle and everything. But man, like, Chorus really knows how to play its gruesome violence yeah, to its it own does. benefit. It's not, it's not cheap, and it's not. You're not supposed to like laugh at it or have fun <laughs> with it. And it's like, <laughs> wait, we need to talk about what? What's up? <laughs> the robot. What? The robot. The robot. Yeah. The robot. Oh my god! Oh, see, I even forgot about him. But, oh. um, the reason why I bring that scene up is there's a part where he turns into a helicopter blade. There's there's one of the Mikura characters, one of the evil demons in the film, is a, is a weird, like, how would you describe it? He's like a, a Swiss army knife man? Yeah, pretty much a Swiss army knife man. Not the movie Swiss Army Man. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, there's a scene re specifically referring to, to the graphic violence in, in part two versus part one. It doesn't show the women that he, he, he turns into a helicopter blade. This sounds ridiculous. He turns into a helicopter blade and tries to go after two nurses in one of the, the climactic battle of part one. And he goes after them just... But he kills them off screen. Yeah, it cuts away. Definitely wouldn't have happened in part two. If no, that had happened. So I think there's there's some sort of difference with that. Part one seems more tame, even. It's a lot more conservative. Yeah, with its violence, which is kind of saying something because it's still pretty. It, yeah, because it knows it knows how to pace it. Yeah, for sure. But this guy, <laughs> I forget his name. I don't know. I, he probably said it himself, and yeah, he didn't yeah. understand it. But, yeah, one of the Mikura characters has this voice filter on. He's got, like, a robot voice filter, and you cannot understand a single fucking thing he's saying. And there's hard-coded Japanese subs to go with it, but I don't speak Japanese. And, and there's no hard-coded English subs. Yeah, and it's... I. I can pick out words that he's saying. Like, thankfully, he doesn't say anything that's really essential <laughs> to the plot. And he's not in it for long. But, like, man, I don't know who made that decision in the ADR room to put that many filters on his voice. But 
Holy shit. I've seen this movie several times and I've never been able to figure out what he's saying. And it's not like we were passively trying to watch this movie either. We yeah. were we were actively trying to understand what he's saying. Yeah. And I mean, like, you could say, like, oh, you could have just turned on subtitles. Oh, mm-hmm. But I shouldn't have to because we no. didn't have to do that for any of the other characters. It's really weird when it, that happens and stuff. I had to turn on subtitles for um, Bayonetta 1 and 2. I don't remember having to deal with this. Really? Because the fucking angels and demons don't speak English. But they aren't hard subbed. What do they speak? Angelic? I don't know. Oh. They don't speak English at all. Are you supposed to know what they're saying? Yes, because in the subs, they have subs. Are they defaulted? Like, turned on? Are they... Like, did you turn them off when you started the game? Ye- yeah, n- I don't remember. I might have. Because if you did, yeah. that's your fault, buddy. That's not my fault if, I, <laughs> if it's a language that doesn't exist. <laughs> Ooh, I'd like to mention that we did watch Chorus in English because it's got a pretty great English dub. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like we might get some flack for that because we didn't watch the sub version of a Japanese film, but like... Karas has got a good English dub. They do. It's and, really good. And usually I'm I'm more of a, a sub person if Actually I am a sub person if the the dub is okay or just good. Yeah. I, I don't see a point in listening to something that that couldn't be exponentially better. But in Karas it's definitely a great dub and a great cast yeah it's got like a weird cast to it too like uh like they're not like a-listers but like like matthew lillard as echo the villain he's great and i don't i don't hear shaggy at all oh, right <laughs> i don't hear it he's a good villain voice he yeah plays he does it a really pretty good straight job. it's really good yeah it's it's a really good dub yeah and also since I mean, we already talked about there isn't really a plot. Yeah, a lot of the dialogue does not serve... It doesn't... There's some exposition scenes, but a good amount of the dialogue doesn't really serve what's going on on the screen. No, it doesn't. Yeah. So it, th- there's not a real huge benefit to, to watching it in sub, unless you want to understand Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> that guy. I guess so. Yeah, that one character. That dies at the oh. at the end of part one should we even he's a cool character design did we spoil? Did yeah we, did i mean we spoil we did we spoiled okay. a lot of what happened in june in the last episode. okay then who gives a shit yeah this is a discussion yeah uh skip now to the time code that joe will post on the screen i'm not doing after. that i'm not doing that I don't, I don't i don't care that much about editing this to do that okay that's fine <laughs> um Oh, shit. There's right. enough reasons to watch Karis be besides the story. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just it's, it's just, very it's beautiful. beautiful. It's extremely entertaining to look at. And I think that's it for, for part, part one. one the, the prophecy. Um, part two, the last three episodes, or the revelation as it's known in movie form, um, is much more action oriented than the first half. And it does a better job at explaining what. It does. You, are... you get character backstory, you get actions, you get a lot more, like, the plot really kicks into gear. Mm-hmm. You see more of Echo, the main villain, you get to really hear what his big plan is and you understand how it works. Um, and it's got a really sick extended action scene for, like, the last half of it. It's probably, like, the last two episodes are entirely... It's awesome! It's great! Action scene. It's really good! But it starts out with Otaha losing his car's powers because um no we don't need to explain it in depth yeah well that happened at the end of the first movie that's how yeah. it ended but um so he lost his powers so he goes back to his life before to save his old friend kidnapped and by a rival gang possibly a lover possibly lover so he goes to rescue him and it shows more of the backstory which I think is done pretty well yeah it, it takes its time to show that he was in Yakuza. He was an exceptional, exceptional killer in life, as he was as a car. Because he can't feel pain. He can't feel pain. Genetic, genetically, he's defective. He can't feel pain. Because he's an incest baby. It's sad. Yeah, it's it's sad. a sad backstory. That's a sad. That's a real condition too. Yeah. I know. Yeah. 
but um, and and right at the start, that's when an absurd amount of violence Yo, happens. Yeah. It it changes the filter. Like human beings are dying graphically, not just <laughs> the the Mikura. And and just copious amounts of bloods, blood, yeah. bloods, <laughs> the, the the gang no. that he, he kills. The bloods. there's a lot of blood. There's a lot of blood and dismemberment, and it it starts off with that. Yeah, you have this idea of what Echo's end goal is, but then when it actually happens, you never really got an idea of like what what the whole master plan entails. And so when it finally does go into effect. It's it's really shocking. Yeah. The amount of devastation and death that you weren't you just don't see coming is just on the screen in front of you and it just it happens so quick. Everything goes to shit so quick. Yeah. And it's really it's really horrific and genuinely surprising to see. And it's it's not the type of horrific violence that can it, it's. I don't think it's over the top at all. No, tonally. it doesn't. It doesn't linger on it. Either. Yeah. You see it happen like almost in real time, and then it's like, and then you're just forced to accept it and then move on. Yeah, and it. There's no part that I thought was horrifically violent in a funny way. Yeah, it was never like, haha, look at that. That's yeah. cool. Or it was never like, teehee, that's kind of goofy. How this that is, guy died. This is so dark that it's funny. Yeah, it's like, oh no. No, it's just like Jesus. Yeah, fuck. you're like fucking god. <laughs> yeah. And that's even shown in, <laughs> in the beginning where, oh, <laughs> fucking murders his dad. Oh, his dad brother. Yeah, his dad brother. Yeah, it's rough. It's rough stuff. But it's tasteful. It's it's tastefully done. Yeah. But again, with that beginning part, they tried they right after. Oh my god! Look at the spikes in that <laughs> dialogue. Um, right after the the flashback sequence of showing the the background of Altaha and his um his buddy. I don't know what to refer to him as. Johnny Young Bosch. Johnny Young Bosch, who voices three characters in part two. <laughs> Altaha's brother slash father. <laughs> does an exposition drop of why he's his brother slash father <laughs> it's, a, it's a little awkward it's a little awkward and it almost seems to serve the purpose of the next line that the chorus has yeah the chorus can only be a chorus if they've experienced true sadness or something mm -hmm. to that effect the human soul yeah. truly knows despair yeah so it, it very much seems like those that line and that character is, is just there to serve as the as the as a, meaning behind yeah. that line. Well, and like I get what you're saying, but I also think it's successful. Is really? I, I I to a degree I care way more about Otaha after that whole exposition dump and flashback sequence than I did in the first half. I, I because I finally understand where he's coming from and like who he is. Like fundamentally, I think with the flashback itself, I I totally feel for him. Yeah, and even with and I don't want to spoil everything because no, you definitely yeah. should watch it. But even after what happens in that scene, the aftermath of that scene, I I truly feel for him. But then like the clunky and kind of awkward dialogue makes me be like, oh, this is that was funny. Well, you get a glimpse of the kind of life he had before and it's like you think you get it but then you get to see the sort of people that he was involved with after that who were forcing him to do all these things and it's like you get it even more and it is a little clunky but there it's it's like you know i mean they didn't explain him sooner <laughs> so unfortunately they had to put it all in at once but to a degree it's successful i think he works his character just works way harder after way better after that yeah absolutely after that whole sequence and especially like even like in a way they did choose the perfect time to do it because he's lost his chorus powers at that point in the story mm -hmm. and so it's like they're kicking him while he's down you know <laughs> yeah it's like oh no he feels hopeless at that point yeah and you slowly see him try to come back to to terms with what he wants to do and life or mm -hmm. death whatever you want to whatever his current state is yeah so i think i think it, 
definitely at, at least they had exposition yeah they very well could have not done that my, and I, I would not have given a shit about Altama. my problem with the exposition is that it raises the question if Otaha is an incest baby why is he the sexiest motherfucker on this side of Honshu is what I don't understand um, he's a good looking fella yeah he's a good looking guy <laughs> It's not a question that I needed that I need answered, but I'd like to have it. Yeah, answered. I mean, if you look at the the kids in Game of Thrones, they all look fucked up. <laughs> that's a more that's a slightly more realistic picture. <laughs> than Karis? What are you talking about? Uh, I thought Game of Thrones was an anime. No. Oh it's, shit. It's not even slightly Japanese. I just took my glasses off, I guess. <laughs> um what else about part two? Are the, hmm. I mean, just that whole climactic battle sequence is really, is really well paced. Yeah, even though it takes up like forty minutes. Yeah, you finally get to see all the abilities of the Karis that you saw sprinkled throughout the series up to that point, and you get to see it all being utilized at once without cutting away. As without well. without cutaways and without scene changes or the battle immediately and then you get to see it all at once and there's like new shit that they toss at you too and it's just a, it's a really nice fight sequence against like really beautiful backgrounds mm -hmm. with like again like really nice effects. Yeah. Like they worked really hard to make these look really cool. Yeah. And, and it's like you can even see towards the end that the budget is being stretched ever so slightly thinner because I, you can definitely tell, but it, I mean, it still looks great. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it still looks like way better than like most. Than like it's way above what you you would usually expect from an anime. Yeah, the one thing that I that is slightly off putting is the train dragon. The tra <laughs> None of this makes sense. It's a, like... such a cool concept though that I don't care. <laughs> Even the no, stuff. That, no, I'm, yeah. I'm saying like in terms of s just speaking about it. Yeah. To someone that hasn't watched it. Oh, I see. Is this is. <laughs> well, like even the, the even the it's effects and even the effects and character designs that aren't as effective as some other bits of of the series. Like conceptually, they're so out there and weird and cool looking that it, it, it like totally works. I'm surprised that we haven't talked about this specifically. The Mikura are. Basically, they're just yokai. They're yokai right? that have been... They've bonded with machines. Yeah. In which, order to become more attached to the human realm. Yeah, which is, I think, something that we definitely should have mentioned. Yeah, there's this, there's this whole idea behind Karis. The, the, it's, it's this really interesting... Um, I don't know, personification of culture versus technology. Is sort of the whole. It's like a dichotomy between yeah, like it, the two of it's them. It's essentially the whole underlying theme mm -hmm. of the series is is culture and tradition versus technology and industrialization, and you see that in the three classes of human, yokai, and mikura, which is like that weird space in between, and it's like a lot of these design elements are really cool and mm -hmm. like pretty subtle too. Yeah, in a lot of ways. And I think one of the most interesting factors of that, the, the, the contrast between culture and technology, is the Mikura are, their main goal is to try to be remembered, to be vilified. Yeah. I think that's a factor of their powers. Or to be acknowledged. A acknowledged. And one of the, the main reasons they kill and murder people is... To, to gain sustenance, but they always leave one person behind. They always leave a single survivor. A single survivor, so they're remembered. So yeah. that someone believes in them, because no one else does. Yeah. And I think that's a really interesting factor that you don't fully understand until the the second part. There's, like, it's sprinkled yeah. throughout the first part. There's and then... a genuine sadness to everything going on in here and i kind of like even with the even like the evil characters i kind of get why they're doing what they're doing they're not entirely sympathetic but the idea that like yokai feel forgotten and shoved to the side and they're losing power mm -hmm. and you know the world they feel the world doesn't have a place for them anymore is like a really like i don't know i it's it's not noble but i kind of get what they're what's going on there yeah 
Like, I don't feel... Nobody in this is evil for the sake of being evil. I don't think. Uh, the police chief. Oh, well, I mean... I mean, same thing! He, he left uh, one survivor for every, you know mass murder he committed but still it's i mean i mean yeah again it is evil but like i understand how he got to that point yeah yeah it's a, a bunch of monsters that yeah were forgotten and lost their power it's, again i'm not i'm not sympathetic i'm just understanding yeah i, I understand <laughs> yeah how fucking dare you <laughs> that you understand these mass murderers joe yeah i get it these animation mass murderers i can get into the mind of the killer like that Netflix. Didn't watch it. Yes. I, I didn't watch it either. I listened to Serial. Yeah, didn't listen. <laughs> but I think that's that's a really interesting aspect of it that that Echo wants to exploit. I'm surprised it took us 40 minutes into the podcast to talk about the whole theme of culture versus tradition, or that, cult, or culture and tradition versus technology that's present throughout this whole series. That's why I. <laughs> Is remembered it, it and it was like oh yeah shit. it's like the main idea it's like the whole lesson yeah and and there's even things like uh, every time Karis kills a Mikro there's subtle changes in the world around him because you need that balance mm -hmm. of of um because you know it you you need culture but you also can't stop technology and it's a part of human society now and so the two need to be in balance so when you when you eliminate an element, it it causes change. Right. It it disrupts order just like even ever so slightly. And so I think the idea that it's not speaking out against technology or in favor of culture, it's just it's very much a reminder that the two need to coexist. Yeah, you can't lose touch on the past. Yeah. And if you do, that's when selfishness and anger really fuels it. Yeah. Which is which is shown with some of the human characters that are willing to destroy and kill everything mm -hmm. just for personal gain. I, I would really, I would love to read more up on the symbolism um, behind a lot of the characters and ideas in this. Because again, I like I was reading the Wikipedia page and it was talking a lot about how a lot of these characters are representative of certain like taoist principles and like shinto ideas and it's like they had links to other wikipedia pages but i didn't have time to click on them so i'd like to go back and read some of that because there's a lot in terms of um design and metaphor going on here um that i think is really interesting but i need to look into more. all right yeah Karis uh, is really pretty Karis <laughs> is really pretty um it's got a super nice message behind it. Yeah. Beautiful artwork. That's a very sweet ending. Entertaining story. Uh, amazing score. Great voice acting. Really good direction. And great direction, yeah. Uh, not the strongest screenplay in the world. No. Yeah, and the story is entertaining enough, and the themes behind it are really respectable and, and understandable. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a good watch. And it's sad that not more people have seen it, because I don't know anything else like it. It's it's really a diamond in the rough. Yeah, and this is only the second time that I've watched these. Movies. It's been a long while it's been, since I saw these. It's been years. Yeah, since, since I've watched until it. we watched it a couple days ago. But um, yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoy the movie, movies, series, series. <laughs> They're just it's thoroughly enjoyable. It's just if you if you're an anime fan or a fan of animation or a fan of horror or action. Or superheroes, or literally all of those, then it's kind of tailor made for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very well rounded. It's extremely planned out. Um, Be prepared for the truly horrific violence in the second part, though, because I I forgot. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty violent anime. Yeah, it's awesome. It's kind of up it, there with the leagues of like Ninja Scroll and and Akira as like. <laughs> those uber violent yeah. animes that kind of have their own tier um but yeah it's incredibly well fleshed out every there's there's a lot to appreciate in it it's a really good watch mm -hmm. would recommend yeah how did we end the last episode <clears throat> i don't remember i think did we just end it i don't remember on what note though 
Oh, I don't know. This has been Seiki House, episode two. Um, since we literally just decided that episode three will be um, Mr. Vampire and Rigor Mortis. We're going to China for the next episode. It's going to be sick. It's gonna yeah. It's going to be cool. It's one of the few Chinese movies that I've seen. Yep. And, and one that I haven't seen. We'll discuss them. How we're, we're, Do we want to try and do these bi-weekly? Not I, bi-weekly, but every other week? That's bi-weekly. Oh, okay. Yeah, good point. For a second, it, would, I, it would just be weekly. For, for a second, I thought it meant twice a week. And I was like, no, no we can't do that. No. Uh, yeah, that, I think that's doable. Hopefully, since I'm going to be back here for a while. Yeah. I'm trying to get like 30 episodes <laughs> done by the <laughs> Alright, thank you. Goodbye. Go watch cars. You shit.